How many multi-tools do you have? If it is more than, let's say, four, you could probably be classified as a multi-tool aficionado, collector, addict, whatever you want to call it. These multi-tools on the table, that's the Leatherman Wingman on the left, Sidekick on the right, probably aren't designed for you. What? I'm serious. These are two of Leatherman's newest multi-tool designs introduced in 2011. I saw them for the first time in my SHOT Show booth review with Leatherman and I was very enthusiastic about them then. I still am. But to set the stage for this nothing fancy tabletop review, I want to throw out a little philosophy of where I think they fit into the Leatherman line. When I say they're not really designed for, I guess, us as multi-tool fanatics, what I'm saying is these are more or less tractor beam multi-tools. That's what I'm going to call them. By tractor beam, I mean they're going to get into the hands of people who perhaps didn't even know what a multi-tool was, and they're going to convert them. I think a really well-designed, high-quality, high-value gear item like these are pretty much sell themselves. All you got to do is get the word out and get customers to buy it and when they find out how useful it is in their everyday lives they'll be converted and they will be pulled into your product line. Probably to buy more of the same perhaps even to upgrade to more expensive and higher quality multi-tools and that's what I mean by tractor beam and I think it is a very intelligent approach to multi-tools. There are so many hundreds of thousands if not millions of people who still to this day again don't know what an MT is, they don't integrate it into their daily systems, they just might with these two. For instance, $20? $27 for a mostly made in the US medium duty multi-tool. That is tremendous value that will attract a lot of new buyers to the multi-tool market, especially at those pricing levels being mass marketed through all types of sources. And by the way, I don't know if you guys noticed this, did you look at the Leatherman Catalog 2012 or on their website and notice the deletion of certain multi-tools since we're the fanatics and we kind of know their entire line? Huh, forum guys knew this a long time ago and I'm always the last to know it seems like. I just found out by looking through. I don't see the blast or the fuse listed for 2012. And I think that's relevant to this tabletop review nothing fancy style because these I think can compare pricing and quality wise, maybe quality wise to the blast and fuse series. I don't know if they necessarily replace those. Um, actually I know they don't because these come in a, a little bit lower pricing levels. but. As a remembrance, here comes a last look at the Leatherman Blast. Dun 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 dun. That's my lame attempt at funeral procession music. Man, I reviewed this a while back, and it is an awesome medium-duty multi-tool. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, if you're new to multi-tools, and I'm throwing out some acronyms, check out my ultra lame video, the multi-tool continuum listed in the upper right in annotation or you can just type it in to Google or YouTube environment you'll see it. Talk about classifications, philosophies of use, design features, MMTs, all that other junk. And this is another Hall of Famer by Leatherman. In fact in TMP no other multi-tool manufacturer has scored more Hall of Fame designs than Leatherman. There's a charge, there's a wave, reviewed long time ago, squirt P4, then the PS4, my everyday carry, the Juice S2, and the list goes on and on. Kind of like the rebar. Just reviewed that. We put a Super Tool 300 in the shrinking machine, came out with the rebar. Man, this company just rocks. They make so many good multi tools. They're just awesome. Allie's just going off on somebody. Sorry. I'll miss the blast. I'm not going to lie to you. In fact, as the review progresses, I may compare and contrast the wingman and the sidekick against the blast because I think it's interesting. This has some advantages over that and these have some over this. Let's get to it. First thing I notice on the wingman and the sidekick, and I noticed this when I saw them for per in person, again shot 2011, is how compact they are. 
They're 6.8 ounces, and I and because of that, I classify them in the way I do it, the medium duty multi tool. That's a little bit lighter, actually a lot lighter than I don't know a wave, almost two ounces. The wave and the charge series, no matter which one you get, weigh about 8.6 ounces, so it's almost two ounces different. Um, and they are compact. They're thinner than the blast that I just showed you, and they're shorter. That makes them, I don't know, easier to carry, easier to integrate into whatever system. Also, I love this, and the Blast lack this, by the way. Do you notice? The Fanatics do, a normal layperson, which I guess I should refer to them to, people who buy this and don't know anything about MTs, will never know that this is actually open architecture. That's kind of a nice thing, and that's something I criticized when I did this review. In other words, I have a real hard time taking this apart if... I want to tinker around with the tool set. Maybe I want to replace the blade. I get a busted tool. I can order it from Leatherman. You can with this. It's mini Torx. And as far as I can see, not even security Torx like it is on the charge and the wave. That's pretty rocking. Another plus, integrated clips on both of these MTs. That's pretty awesome. The Fuse and Blast did not have that. They were kind of the old school Leatherman design. And maybe what we're looking at here is new school. Something that I've always loved, and this is why I still consider the Wave and Charge Series my all-time favorite medium-duty multi-tool, sorry, nothing's changed, is the accessibility of the tool sets, the major tool sets from the exterior, without having to open up nothing. That's pretty rocking. And you can do that first with the Sidekick, and we'll start our tool review here, I guess, and we'll pop out the main blade. There you go accessed from the exterior and that is a 420 high carbon stainless steel blade. By the way, this sidekick just returned from a nothing fancy adventure, the Jeremiah Johnson trip. Check out those videos. You'll see it in action around the campfire doing other minor woodwork, uh, excuse me, woodworking tasks. Uh, pretty happy with it. There is one thing I did notice and this kind of gets back to what I was saying that maybe these MTs are not really designed for us fanatics in that we have this. We got some wiggle in there. Little bit of side to side wiggle. I didn't really try to tweak it out. I don't, I don't think you could. I think it is what it is. And this. Now to a normal, again, <clears throat> lay person, they probably would never even notice that. It wouldn't bug them at all. But for us raised on the quality levels we've been seeing forever from Leatherman, I'll just use the wave since it's convenient. We will notice it. I mean, it's extremely tight lockup and everything. Also, if we look at just the, the tool in the close position, movement and how it closes. Do you see any wiggle in these higher quality Leathermans? No, you don't. Let me close this blade here. You'll see a little bit here. Just a little wiggle back and forth. I got my lanyard. That's a Kelty reflective lanyard, so I can find it in the night if I drop it. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. That There is a slight reduction, and I really want to emphasize the word slight reduction in quality levels to bring them to this price point. That's my take. Uh, again, the blade, that does bug me, and I did notice while I was cutting wood, that is kindling, the blade kind of folded on me. What? It did, because I'm pushing it down, I'm just doing this, and it unlocked. Yeah, I was a little bit dismayed at that too, because that's minor duty tasks that I think the multi-tool should be able to withstand. On this side, we're still with the sidekick, by the way, you'll find a shaw. There you go. I did use that, I think, too, up there when I made that wilderness target holder. Where did that blast go? Here it is. I think it's interesting, because we'll look at the saw in the blast, which I preferred. A little bit longer, a little bit more precise. Uh, let me see, thinness-wise... A little bit thinner too. I like the thin saws. They just seem to cut better. Minor thing. But at least it has it and it is decent and it worked just fine that I saw. On the exterior of the wingman, by the way, you'll find a partially serrated blade. Awesome. Booyah! And when we did the booth review, I think it was Brad at Leatherman. How you doing Brad? His kid's a TMP here. What an awesome family they are. Working for Leatherman. Great American tool company. Uh, Brad was telling me though, and I hope I'm getting the name right, that the partially serrated blade is preferred again by the layperson. People that don't know much about knives or multi-tools kind of prefer it because they don't have to fool around with sharpening it. Maybe it's something that stays sharp for them 
you know, the life of the tool. Me, I hate it. On this style of blade, I just don't like it. But again, I'm, you know, I'm uh, an enthusiast, an MT enthusiast. And maybe you feel the same way or not, I don't know. Both these blades, by the way, are hollow ground. They're not the awesome full flat ground, gorgeous clip shape that we see in, that's the serrated one, in the charge in the wave. Still my favorite overall. And nor do you see the high quality steel. I mean, it depends on which version you get. This is the AL Charge 154 CM steel. If you go with the TTI, you're going to get S30V blade steel. For most intents and purposes, the 420 high carbon will serve people fine. Let's check the lockup of the Swingman. About the same. About the same. I mean, it's not horrible. Let's crack it open. We'll start with the Wingman for the interior tool review. Okay, they do kind of clump. If you have a problem getting them out, you can push them from the bottom of the tool right here. One thing I'm struck with by all of these, both the wingman and the sidekick, are the incredibly positive detents at which they come out. Listen to this. Get that can opener out of the way. I mean, they are stiff, well done leather leatherman. Well done. There's your file. It's just coarse. It is not filed, I'm sorry, serrated on the bottom, so you can't groove with it. That kind of sucks. And I would like to see a dual pattern file. But again, we have to be realistic at the pricing level. You're looking at a $20 multi-tool, for crying out loud. You got an inch pattern on there and centimeters. I think it's like an inch and a half. Uh, not sure if that's super useful. And again, if we bring back the, la the blast or the fuse, for that matter, or a lot of other multi-tools, you have a very useful you know, measurement, you know, ruler basically when you push those two halves together. You lose that with these. Okay, but again, remember, remember the philosophy of use. Crack this open. This is called a package opener on the wingman, and yes, it works. You know those hard plastic clamshell packages that we always have to crack open? They are a total hassle, and I got to be honest, sometimes I've used my knife blade, and I damaged the very item I was trying to get out. Scored it, scratched it, cut it. I know you're laughing because I know you've done it too. The idea behind this is that you don't do that and I think it's a great addition, a useful addition into a multi-tool and you can find other uses for it as well. Still learning about it actually. So I like it. I think it's cool. And then I think I just showed you, you got the can opener and cap lifter right here. There you go. Well nothing fancy, one thing I don't like about the Leatherman wing, wingman or sidekick is they don't have locking tools. I showed you the positive detents. Um, I kind of disagree with that because I think you can lock them. I'll show you here in a second exactly what I'm talking about. First, there's your drivers. And by the way, on that file, I didn't mention that, you do have a small flat blade driver right there. Here's your larger flat blade driver. And I've, I've always called these two-dimensional Phillips bits. That's just my terminology. And you can see some markings on there kind of tell you what they're intended for. That's hilarious. This one's for Phillips. That's flat blade. Really? Yeah, let's bring that blast out again because I really, really loved the long and precise shanks on the blast. Look at that. And on other Leatherman tools. And for that matter, other multi-tools altogether. Victorinox, perhaps. Another great multi-tool manufacturer. Yeah, and then we also lose this. This is very sad. The mini bit driver. Mini Phillips, mini screwdriver. That's gone. At least if you went with the blast. But notice the long shank. This one was just ideal. And then there's a true Phillips driver that was in there. You don't have those in here. I still think these are functional. I did test them myself. They work fine. They're not quite as precise. They don't grab the head as well as they can because they are a polished finish a la Victorinox. Which, by the way, will give both the wingman and the sidekick excellent rust resistance, in my opinion. The bead blasted finish does not. Talking to my ton, my son, my ton, my son Tactical Doodle down in the jungle when he was running the MTs like this, they would get rust spots on them. Pretty much any steel that uh, you just have to take care of them a lot when you're in a super humid environment. When you have a tool deployed and the handles closed on either the sidekick or the wingman, you do get stabilization from the spring loaded handles. They want to stay closed. And that does kind of lock the tool. So uh, they're not really locking in the traditional sense, but at least they won't fold on you because you have the handle closed. So that's as far as the travel will go. And of course in that direction they're completely limited. So 
they're not really locking. But if I were to use them for an extended period of time, I definitely close the handles. And that takes us to the pliers of the wingman and sidekick. There's a look at their preciseness. I think some guys have criticized both of these for their anvil style wire cutting feature. Let's see, what can we compare them against? Uh, here comes a Charge AL, completely different pricing level, by the way, and quality level for that matter. Uh, notice, by the way, the cast in Leatherman logo and name in the plier head. Leatherman told us in, uh, Peter, one of their engineers, saying that that's actually a very cost additive feature to do on both sides. You'll see that completely missing on these multi-tools to save money. But again, to the wire cutting feature, you see how these overlap. By the way, I've bent these cut nails on the Charge Series. This one's more anvil, more of a pinch wire cutter. I found it worked great on paper clips, small nails, wire stripping worked good. This is actually a hard wire cutter at the base, so the bigger stuff would be cut with this, preserving your jaws. No issues with them. There's your pliers there to grasp on to whatever, and pretty good preciseness on the tip on both of these. Actually outstanding when you again consider the price. And how's this? Spring loaded pliers. I love them. I think they're very handy. I mean the spring is not obnoxious. It's not something that you have to squeeze. It's very light. But it just makes manipulation of the pliers so much quicker. When you go back to an older school Leatherman, I guess like this, you kind of notice it. If you've been using these for a while and then you go to this plier, you're like, oh crap, they're not spring loaded. So again, that's kind of a Kind of a cool thing, maybe again cutting edge for what's coming in Leatherman future designs. And then a couple differences on the sidekick, which by the way comes with this cool pouch. Yep, and also a carabiner with a hex drive hole in it. So you can use standard bits in this. I didn't use it at all, by the way. In fact, to be honest, I didn't use the pouch at all. Why is that, nothing fancy? How do I integrate this into my system for me? I mean, I'm not clipping this to my belt and letting it bang around or on the exterior of my pack. I just don't. What I did is I went out and bought a standard, still awesome Leatherman accessory pouch, which fits most of their MTs, medium style. Very cheap, around seven bucks, totally worth it. That's what I packed this in, by the way, the sidekick in, uh, up on the Jeremiah Johnson Expedition. Worked great. And there's other ones you could use. Here's one from REI. It's just a standard nylon pouch. I do think it's kind of cool that for the pricing level, $27, you do get this. For If you're just going to run this in your pocket, I would just take off the carabiner and keep it like that. That way you would keep it clean, lint-free, and it won't fall, slide out of your pocket because this gives traction. So, good value. But back to the sidekick tool differences. I already showed you the main blade. It's non-serrated. We talked about the saw already. On to the interior. Oh, by the way, there's one right there. Lanyard. And that is helpful if you take it out in snow conditions like I did. If you drop this and it punches a hole in the snow and you don't have a lanyard on it, whoo, been there, done that. Good luck finding it. Way good luck. The Sidekick actually has a little short serrated blade in it, which is kind of interesting. I don't know how fast it is to get out. Here it is right there. Uh, the reason I say speed is because you could actually, if you have that out, use it as a rescue cutter, rescue cutter or a belt cutter because it kind of has that sheep's foot style blade right there. It's chisel serration. Interesting. Uh, honestly, I really don't know how much I'd use that. You might though. Same file, same can opener, cap lifter, and I think the same drivers on this. There is set for one difference. I forgot to show you on the other one. I'll go back here in a second. Same drivers. There you go. One thing I forgot to show you on the wingman is, you guys are probably laughing because you know how much I love these, the skizzers. These are actually outstanding scissors. Outstanding. Look at the size difference between those and the ones that were in the dun, 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 blast. And for that matter, the charge. These are the old style. I should say current style in some multi-tools because this is the biggest size they can fit in. Leatherman scissors. And these are very precise. They're very strong and sturdy. They're just tiny. These scissors work good. I'm talking these ones. Both of them do. But I like having the bigger style of scissors with me. Definitely. There you go. Those are the differences between these two extremely high value, mostly made in the United States, medium duty multi-tools. What do you mean mostly made? Well, I think, honestly, to get them down to this pricing level, the components 
I don't know which ones, but I think some of them are made overseas. Maybe China, Taiwan. I don't know. I didn't call up Leatherman to find out. I don't know. But they're mostly made in the U.S., and the pricing levels on these are just simply astounding. They're tractor beam multi-tools. Um, after that blade kind of kind of folded on me during Firecraft up there in the mountains, um, I, I wasn't, to be honest, super enthused about taking this one out on another trip. To be honest, I rarely take a multi-tool out on my backpacking trips. I rarely do. It's just too much weight if it's in a man-portable hiking style of trip. And when I do, it's going to be this one. Na -na 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 -na. The awesome, still awesome, Hall of Famer Leatherman Juice S2 version has almost all the features I need. Uh, it doesn't have a punch or an all, I know. Neither do these for that matter. There you go. I take those. So... If I'm going to go into some heavy duty use or extended medium duty use, I'm still going to reach for probably the charge, the wave, if my system can take the weight. But I got to tell you, man, it's nice knowing I can thrash on these for the cost. I don't have to worry about dinging up the plier head, cutting nails. I don't have to worry about actually even losing it for $20 because they're just so affordable. I think for the pricing, the quality that you're getting out of these tractor beam MTs, astounding what great gift items man they're easy enough to engrave I tested it right there just engrave something a message with it with your engraver or have it done give it to some person who doesn't know anything about multi-tools and you will sell them on all things Leatherman because they're going to integrate it into their lives they're going to see how awesome it is to have a multi-tool on their person at all times they're going to save the day peel the apple cut the wire cut the nail when no one else has the capability to do so and again, we have another multi-tool addict on our hand. Highly recommended. Highly recommended. And for the price, Hall of Famers in the Nut and Fancy Project. That's my review. Thanks for watching and all your support and friendship from my friends around the world. Out.